still going around already. I messed it up. That's okay. You, you messed it up. How could you couldn't possibly mess it up? Yeah, I messed it up. It's I right. had the wrong rule. That's okay. okay. This is three one. No, I'm still calling three one one. It was three one one for nineteen years, and they changed it on us. It's okay, it's okay but you'll figure it out because I know you like to do your work. I, you know I did. Okay, no problem. Okay, so. You've already spoken about oh. different head injuries, um, different things of that nature. Now, this has to do with the pituitary and the post pituitary. This is when this is affected. You've heard of anti diuretic hormones before. It's just what it says anti diuretic. So, when there's too much anti-diuretic hormone, sorry, come on. when you have too much of it, it's gonna hold a lot of fluid in the body. When you have too little, it's going to release copious amount of fluids. That's just my overview statement. I will be separating it later on. You will see another name for diabetes insipidus if you do research or whatever. However, I am leaving it as diabetes insipidus because it is a process of changing the name of this particular condition or problem. All right. So pretty much I've already stated um, excess and a deficiency. <coughs> now both of these will affect something that's called the osmolality. And uh, Ms. Garrison was, oh, by the way, congratulations. What did I do? You're speaking in uh, oh, last Friday? Last Friday. Ah, congratulations. It was just a little happy. Ooh, the State Nurse so Association so had a conference in Alexandria and they asked Dr. Udo and I to present. And we did, and it was fun. Yeah, nice. And we told those nursing students that we love our nursing students, and they're as stressed as you are. It's <laughs> universal, so you're in good company. All right. <laughs> so anyway, Ms. Garrison, taking some of you all um, to the closet with the eyes. Supply of closet. Yeah, yes. what I'm so, talking about. Right. So you probably, you know, this would probably be kind of a rehearsal for you to remember those fluids. Okay, so when I say blood osmolality, it's the amount of solutes and the amount of fluids, and it needs to be balanced, okay? Now, your normal is between 285 to 295. You notice that's a really close um, range. If it's less than 285, you got low solute concentrate, meaning um, the proteins and the um, electrolytes and all of those. Those are low, meaning you have too much water. Okay? If it's greater than 295, then you have a high concentration of the cells and the protein and all of that. So just think about it like that. Now, Let's go back. Less than 285, remember I said you have too much water. So if you have excessive amount of water, what, you, what do you think is going to happen to the weight? <laughs> the patient's weight will increase, correct. So, um, and of course, if you have greater than 295 and you have very little water, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to decrease, they're going to be dehydrated, all right? So you've got an excessive hydration, and then you have um, dehydration. And those are the two things that you're going to be trying to care for in this patient. I think I mentioned it last week. How many kilograms to one liter? One kilogram. One kilogram is one liter. Very good. I'm glad you all remember. Okay. 
<laughs> Let's look at this. Let's really get it deep in because this is something you may have had in biology. I know it's in chemistry, but I don't believe that they actually in chemistry. So, um, low osmolality. You remember I said less than 285. So, what do you think is going to happen to that cell structure? Will it shrink? Will it increase? Will it stay normal? Increase, right? Think about a balloon. If you were to add water to a balloon, you keep adding water. It's only going to take so much. And what's going to happen to the balloon eventually? It's going to burst. Exactly. Um, so think about it like that. I'm going to add too much fluid, so it's going to burst. All right. Now, when I ask about fluid status, we've already determined that this patient is fluid volume what? Overloaded. Overloaded. Very good. Bless you. God bless you. What type of fluids do you think they might use in a patient that just has too much fluid? Hypertony? Hyper? Hyper. Hyper. You got too much fluid in the body, so you want to draw it. Hyper. That's okay. This is what you do if you think you got the wrong answer. If I, you know, you go, you jump. I knew the answer, but I want to see if you were paying attention. <laughs> Never feel bad about your answer. I don't know everything. I will be the first one to tell you. I don't know. I have not a clue. If I can find it, I'll let you know. All right. So. Feel comfortable enough to answer the question. If it's incorrect, this is the time to get it fixed. Okay? All right. So you're going to use a hypertonic solution. Um, what's one of the main hypertonic solutions you can think of off the top of your head? Hello? D50? What else? 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 3%. 
Elora is what? Lactated rhinus. That's what kind of fluid? Isotonic. Isotonic. Normal saline. Isotonic. Isotonic. Very good. And I'll talk a little bit about the trickier one later on. But you're going to use isotonic solutions. So now we're looking at the high osmolality, which is greater than 295. What's going to happen to it? There you go. It's going to shrink. Think about your plants if you deal with plants. You don't water it, and all of a sudden you see it shriveling. I almost killed an ivy. It's hard to kill an ivy, guys. <laughs> I almost did. So what I did is I added water. I added a lot of water, and all of a sudden, I saw this ivy come back to life. I still have it, guys. It's still living. <laughs> I'm not a very good plant person, but we gave it fluids. So with this patient, we already know this patient is fluid volume overload, fluid volume excess. So what type of fluid will I probably be giving this patient? Hypotonic solutions, OK? We're going to be given hypotonic, hypo, with an O, solution. This is for the high osmolality. That's for the high, got it, got correct. It. Oh, when will we give isotonic? No, no, no. no. Oh, okay. okay. Normal for isotonic. That means everything is in check. It's between the 285 and the 295. Greater than 295, you give a hypotonic. Yes, ma'am. Um, the fluid volume overload was for the low osmolality, right? You know what? I'm glad you caught that. Because that was a snafu out my mouth. Stop it. Stop it. You're right. It's a deficit. Fluid volume deficit. Yes. Please feel free because of, but you're right. Feel free if I have a senior moment and I say the wrong thing. This patient is in a fluid volume deficit. Which one? Was it high? High. Too high. Too high. Right? All right. This patient is going to be dehydrated. So being dehydrated, you're going to have a fluid volume deficit. All right? And you've got to get fluids in there. So when I said earlier, the solutes, are super concentrated, but there's very little water. Since I have a lot of solutes, what, that's the reason why I'm saying you're going to use a hypotonic. Do you remember what a hypotonic solution is? The half, not normal saline, but half, oh, can you say half? Yeah, half normal saline, 0.225. Now, the one that's tricky, is that D5. <coughs> that D5 will mess with your head because the D5 on the shelf is isotonic. But according to the literature, once it hits the body, it becomes hypotonic. Now, most of the time when they use hypotonic solutions on adults, they, um, they usually use the half normal saline the 0 0.25 and all of that, a lot of times they use it on children. I haven't seen it used in any of, this haven't seen it used on any of my um, ICU patients. I'm sorry, you say on the shelf it's ISO, but when, it hits, when it's inside, inside it's what? Hypo? Hypo. Hypo. So are we saying D5W? Mm -hmm. we give D5W to these normal? normal? You can if the doctor orders that. The likelihood is very slow. Mm -hmm. The reason being because if you give a copious amount of D5W, mm -hmm. then you've got to deal with uh, increase in your blood glucose. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. So, but we're not giving it to these high osmolality. We can. Mm -hmm. That's a hypotonic solution. Okay. So you can give it to the people that are uh, high osmolality. Okay. Yes. 
because that's a hypotonic solution. All right, and you have already discussed this, so we won't even um, talk any more about it. All right. Now, sometimes the dogs give you um, an order for osmolality. Sometimes they don't. We won't. Osmolality can be calculated. This is the calculation for it. It's two sodium plus the glucose over 18 plus the BUN <coughs> over 2.8. All right? You can do it. Just now, admit it to memory. You can do it. Yeah. Now, it just depends on the semester, whether or not this is going to show up. It may show up like it may not, but you need to at least know how to do it, okay? So, I'm going to give you one, and I'm going to give you the calculator, uh, get you the calculator, and then we're going to see if we come up with the right answer. Oh, I see. This is a formula. All right. So, you ready? The sodium is 155. The glucose is 72. The BUN is 20. I need you to calculate that for me. If I was to ask this, I'll tell you where to round it, whether it's the tenth or the whole number. Together. That's why I said I must have done something wrong. But that is not my number. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. No, I didn't. Ready? Ready, 
sodium 131, glucose 80, BUN 2.8. Because the BUN is usually what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a 2.8. Mm -hmm. 131 for the sodium, 80 for the glucose, 2.8 for the BUN. Sounds good to me. If anyone got 267, that sounds good. All right? So let's, let's process this patient now. So we decided the osmolality on this patient is what? So, so this is fluid volume. Overload. Overload. The fluid we're going to use to replace is a what type of fluid? Hyper. Give me a good example. They all hear me. <laughs> yes. So we don't always use D50. Sometimes we use D5 normal saline, D5 LR, D5 and a half. Those are usually considered, if you've got two substances together, it's usually considered hypertension. It's up here. Hyper. So, no, see? It's hyper time. What are you talking about? Well, you said it's which? You just said 365. It's less than 5, so you said to give hypotonic before. Yes. Less than 285. No. I know. Less than 285. Hyper time. Hyper time. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's clear this up. If you have fluid volume overload, you're going to use a hypertonic solution. All right? Because you want to draw some of that fluid out of the patient. So for this particular patient, that's fluid volume overload you're going to use a hypertonic solution, like one of these that's listed here, or 3%. It just depends on the patient's sodium. Ms. John, I always tell my students in clinical, check out those three solutions on the far right, the hypertonic solutions. Like Ms. John said, she didn't say the word combo, but that's a combo. Whenever you have a combo, that's hypertonic. D5 normal, even D5 half, D5 LR, even D5 quarter, that's a combo, so it's hypertonic. Yep. Okay, so I'm glad that came up. Is it clear as mud yet? <laughs> okay. All right. So, already explained about the D5W. That's the one with the S. But I have them. Does that show up on your papers? No, this is a picture. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Can I clarify the calculation? It's two times the sodium plus glucose divided by 18 plus BUN divided by 2.8. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's the formula. Okay. Do you know the difference in your fluids? Do you know the difference in colloids? What type of, I think that's this uh, quail. What are co colloids? No, colloids. I heard protein. Right. Oh, colloids. Colloids. Right? There's a difference between colloids and um, crystalloids. All right? All of these fluids that's on here are considered crystalloids, all right? The colloids are like your testane, your albumin, 
those are your colloids. What they do is they sow thick until you may only need a little of it as opposed to if I'm given a um, massive amount of this fluid. Like for example, um, you might only give 250 milliliters of a colloid in the place of your uh, crystalloids. So these are crystalloids. This is what we use most of the time. Uh, I think you had this is either level two and in your pharmacology. So kind of do like I do a lot of time. I have to go back and, and pull those files up just to remember. All right. What's another one? I think somebody just mentioned it. A teacher. <coughs> we don't use it that often. It was in IC Ray. 3% is a good one. Manitol. But I'm talking colloids. Oh. Yeah, manitol. I don't know if she mentioned it. She might have mentioned it. She may have. I don't know. But manitol is something that we use also to release a lot of fluid <coughs> off of the brain. And manitol is very, very small amount. Okay? That's an osmotic diuresis. Okay, so osmotic diuretic. So then you have blood products. So you have colloids, which are the thick stuff, crystalloids, which are everything labeled was here, and then you have the blood and the blood products. All right. Now, this used to question. be yes. Three percent you said was a colloid. No. Somebody else said 3%. 3% is the crystalloid. It's a very hypertonic crystalloid. Yes. Be careful with it. Yes. Where to go, be careful with it. So thanks for bringing that up. Okay. So colloids are thick. Think about thickness. Now, as far as this, you don't have to write this down. This is something that I used to do as an activity when we could break up in groups and circles and different things like that. However, I kept it in here because sometimes this helped you break down the difference between VI and SIADH. So if you want to use something similar to this, you can uh, to just kind of separate it and get it in your head. Okay. So we have two. We have VI and we have SIADH. <clears throat> primary. The primary is a lack of ADH. <laughs> That's either caused by a malfunction in your pituitary or your post pituitary. What are some of the things that you um, What is one of the main things you think can cause this problem in the primary, as a primary? Tumor, right? They have a tumor in the brain. So that's what they mean, lack of ADH secretion. Because if you remember, DI has not enough ADH. So they're gonna put out copious amounts of Secondary. Now you probably know secondary. Now, secondary can be head injuries, uh, neurosurgeries, hypoxia. Like the brain <coughs> wouldn't have oxygen enough. Wouldn't have enough oxygen. All right? Now, you know what nephrogenic is? What is that? The kidneys, is not re the kidneys are not responding appropriately to ADH. And how they determine the difference between the ones in the head and 
the kidney, they do a water deprivation test. So they'll do a water deprivation test. And if, um, when they give the vasopressin, it's a vasopressin that they use for that purpose. So when they administer it, in order to determine if it's from the head or it's from the kidneys, if it's from the head, then we're going to have an increase of urinary output, all right? So the urinary output is going to increase. Now, drug-related. You've got many medications that will cause this problem. The only two that I mentioned is lithium, which I don't hear too much about lithium anymore. Hopefully they're not using I haven't done mental health in years, so I'm not sure. Um, but if you work in a mental health area, you know, you can kind of determine that lithium was something, I think you had to do blood work constantly and all of that, and all of that kind of old school. There is an antibiotic that's called democycline, D-E-M-E-C-L-O-C-Y-L-I-N-E. -E -E. And you'll see this word again, but you'll see it up there. It's probably in your notes. D-E-M-E-C-L-O-L-C-L-O. C Y L I N E. Could you give us that one more time? Sure. Mm -hmm. D E M E C L O C Y L I N E. That's a type of antibody. And it can cause diabetes and syphilis. We gave two drugs. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Um, for the nephrogenic, the vasopressin, if from the head, the urinary output will increase. So if it's from the kidneys, will it not Nothing increase? Happens. Okay. No, it won't increase. Okay. If it's the kidney, because the kidneys are not functioning properly with the ADH. So if I give them ADH, it's still not going to um, function. Thank you for all that. All right, let's look at the assessment finding. I've never seen it at 30 in my life. But this is what literature says. If it gets this high, I mean, the patient might even not be here anymore. But according to the literature, it says that the patient could have a urinary output from four to uh, 30 liters within a 24-hour period. That's a very copious amount. <coughs> very broad right? range, too. <laughs> very low. I don't know if you all ever heard of something that's called specific gravity. Mm -hmm. Specific gravity is actually um, used to check the concentration <coughs> of the patient's urine. The specific gravity on this patient is very low. Let me look at my number because I don't want to misquote. Specific gravity for this patient is less than 1.005. So the specific gravity is less than 1.005. And to give you a reference point, Water is supposed to be, and I say that like you're around here, water is supposed to be 1.000. So when you really think about it, you're looking at kind of a very faint yellow urine. It's a copious amount, because, but you have no solutes in it. So like the, it, it can almost be like um, totally translucent. 
some of the main key manifestations, you're going to see this patient uh, have an increase in frequency of urine, and they're going to be extremely thirsty. Is that normal? Is no, water is water. Um, yeah. I said I gave a reference point. Oh, no, that's okay. I out of <laughs> no, uh -uh. guess what? I was zoned out just. This crap is over. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 When I say, and I understand what you meant, because when you say reference points, usually with labs, that's usually a reference point. So, my apologies. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So, I was just referring to water so you can see just how light it was. Okay. Now, with the eye, this patient is hypovolemic. You've heard it over and over and over again. What's the blood pressure? Low. Blood pressure is low. What about the heart rate? Uh, the heart rate will be high. Why? Trying to compensate, right? You're trying to get the blood through, so you're going to have weak pulses. Now, your blood is going to be hemo concentrated. So your labs and things are probably going to be <coughs> <coughs> The urine concentration is very low, like I just described for specific gravity. You're going to have a thirst issue. You might have decreased cognition. I think cognition is the um, interrelated with this one. Irritability, lethargy, and in, in some cases, a coma. <coughs> Let's look at uh, the serum osmolality. What did I say was norm? 295. The 295. So I'll give you a urine osmolality. With this patient, the norm can be from a range of 50 to 1200 osmolar per kilogram. Now it's a big range, and the reason it's a big range is because in some instances, some of us drink plenty of water, and some of us don't drink enough water at all. And then there's that happy medium. I am the one that don't drink enough water, and I know better. The urine osmolality is 50 to 1200 OSM per kilogram. <coughs> What's the normal sodium? Yeah, your paper is saying 136, but I accept 135. Your BUN? 10 to 20, very good. I do remember that. Now, I told you about cognition, and I told you it's interrelated. So when we think about the cognition, an elevated sodium can possibly lead to your cognitive changes such as the agitation, seizures, and even coma. Sodium elevation can cause um, problems with your cognition. Changes such as agitation, seizures, and even coma. Because most people associate seizures with low. But if it's imbalanced, <coughs> they can still have seizures. Okay, before I go to the treatment, any questions? Yes, yeah, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I think you would have been told this is my penance from God <laughs> to be gender <laughs> I didn't learn gender primitive, but I became an RN. I'm not an LPN. Okay, the only thing I knew about gender primitive was that. Okay. Yes, yes ma'am. I was saying with DI, serum as malality will be um, increased, urine as malality will be decreased, mm -hmm. sodium will be high, mm -hmm. and BUN. B-U-N may or may not change. But thanks for bringing that up because I didn't say about B-U-N. But it may not change. It could be a little elevated, but on the whole, it doesn't change that much. Okay. So, so she went over that and I did. Any other questions before I go to the treatment? This is why endocrine and I are not just super friends. Because endocrine will kind of throw loops in the deal, you know? I like think you got it down and here you go. All right. We've already talked about what kind of fluid we're going to use. This is DI, yes, ma'am. On the stretch. On the stretch. Okay. okay, gotcha. DI. When a patient is in DI, they are dehydrated. Some of them so severe that the sodium and all of those numbers are elevated. So this is the reason why they use hypotonic solution, like half normal sales. All right? Now, there is something that's called fluid replacement. If we're treating a patient that had copious amount of urine, remember I said anywhere from four to 30 uh, liters within a 24 hour. So, if this person is putting out, let's say 2,000 an hour, then we got to replace that 2,000 <coughs> the next hour, right? Yes. Yeah. Good. So, if I have uh, a patient that's alert and they put out 700, they probably can bring 700 within an hour. But if I have a patient that's putting out even more fluid than that, it probably has to be half normal sick. So, you urinate, you replace. You urinate, you replace. You replace whatever's lost that hour before. All right? Okay. Very important. Now, this, I don't know if any of you had a chance to give it, but it's called DBABP. And they usually give it nasal. And the purpose being is to slow down the urinary output. This is really like a decimal pressing. It's like, um, it's actually ADH. It's a, a synthetic form of ADH. All right? So, because this patient has very little ADH, we either give it nasally, subcutaneous, I think it's subcutaneous. We can give it via drip, or we give vasopressin drip for other things too. We can give it to it as a drip. It can be given orally, or it can be Given IV. Evidently, I didn't ask about subcutaneous, but uh, I know you can give it IV and feel, so I'm not like going to say subcutaneous because I'm not absolutely sure. I don't know what happened to it in my notes. 
Okay. So, nasally, it can be a problem. And the reason it could be a problem nasally is because sometimes it causes ulcers in the nose. Sometimes it causes respiratory chest tightness. So if it's causing those type of problems, then you will have to go to either the oral or the IV. And always make sure which one that you're giving and make sure that the doctor changes the dose. Oh, I was going to ask him, can you get it orally? Does it also get ulcers on the nasal? Um, orally, they usually just swallow it. Okay. So probably, it's mm -hmm. not like a sublingual, okay. but I, I get your thought. Okay. It's not a sublingual, it's swallowed. Thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, because sometimes when you spray something up in a nasal area, too frequently, sometimes it will cause an ulceration. Okay. Now, why am I giving this again? To decrease the urinary output. That's the reason I'm giving. Thank you. All right. And the IV form is ten times more potent than the oral form. So just make sure when your doctor orders medication that is ordered correctly. All right, that's for you the nurse to be your patient's advocate. Yeah, that's the reason I'll never see nurses replaced with a robot. Because I don't think they can think that well. No, you never know with this AI stuff. <coughs> okay. So I expect that urinary output to decrease. Now, um, my bad son. Oh, almost. All right. I tell you what. Why don't you come back for nine thirty, and we can finish the treatment.